Hello, today we are looking at AQA, AS Unit 1, Economics, and the paper is from January 2011, and we are looking at multiple choice questions. The first question is about the fundamental economic problem. The answer is A. Why? Because we know resources are finite and wants are unlimited. That's why what, how, and for whom goods and services should be produced. For question number two, D is the answer because economies of scale increases productivity. So better supervision will result in high labor productivity and better decision making. And that's why in bigger organizations we have specialist managers. In question number th three, it says, which one of the following statements about America good is true? And the answer is A. It may be provided by the free market, but not in sufficient quantities. We know, such as education uh, from the private sector, is underproduced and underconsumed. And that's why we have uh, state education. Question number four. Straightforward, law of supply states the higher the price, more incentives for suppliers to supply more. Cetris paribus means all other factors are constant. That's why B is the answer. In question number five, B is the answer again. Why? The demand for steel will increase if demand for cars increase. So we're talking about derived demand. So the quantity of consumer goods purchased would lead to an increase for capital goods. In question number six, the diagram below shows the marginal private and social benefit curves and the marginal private and social cost curves for a merit good. So the initial market equilibrium the initial market equilibrium is at point E. So to avoid a misallocation of resources in the market, the government should provide subsidy of P2, P3. Why? Because at P2, the suppliers are incentivized to su uh, supply Q2 and at P3 the consumers are willing to buy Q2 so at this price P2 and P3 should be the subsidy that the government should be willing to supply uh, or to give to the uh, producers so part A is the answer in question number seven A is the answer why? because it's about a free good which has no opportunity cost a good example is the free air However, we can argue that what about the pollution costs? Question number eight. Which one of the following statements involves a value judgment? Now we know value judgment cannot be tested. It is just an opinion. Henceforth, D is the answer because the government was wrong to increase spending on roads. In question number nine, in August 2000, the World Health Organization said a 10% increase in cigarettes prices worldwide will reduce consumption of cigarettes by 4% in high-income countries and by 8% in low-income countries. So I've put down D is the answer. Why? Because the PED for cigarettes is negative in both high-income and low-income countries. There is a relationship that the demand, we can see over here, decreases. To prove that, I've put down the formula for PED, which is equal to percentage in quantity demanded over percentage in prices. So change in quantity demanded is uh, minus 4% divided by increase in prices plus 10. So we can say minus divided by plus equals minus or minus 8 divided by plus 10. So minus divided by plus again gives you minus. Another thing is um, when we talk about the law of demand, and we talk about the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded, the negative is normally ignored. In question number 10, the diagram below shows the PPF for an economy. Now we can look on the diagram. If the economy is moving from point X to point Z, then there is a decrease for all other goods and increase for armaments. And that's called the opportunity cost, giving up all other goods to manufacture more armaments. So which one of the following movements? So we know from the diagram, as I've explained, D is the answer. In question number 11, I have said C is the answer. C is the answer because 
S moves outwards to S2, which is because of labor productivity, which brings down the prices and it shifts outwards. On the other hand, D1, which is the demand curve, has moved inwards, D2. There is a reduction in demand. Why? Increase in the price of complementary goods will decrease demands. And I've given you examples over here. If the prices of tennis rackets goes up, then the demand for tennis balls will fall because not many people will buy tennis rackets. In question number 12, the table below shows the value of the price elasticity of demand facing each type of provider of press, uh, passenger transport. So what we are looking for is if the fare changes for the use of each of these forms of transport rose by the same percentage, which type of price, uh, provider would see the greatest proportional increase in total sales revenue? So we are looking for the industry or the transport companies or methods which are the least price inelastics means you change the price but less people or let's say uh, we'll, uh, there will be less changes in the demand so if you look at 1.4 because it's above 1 we know it is highly price elastic minus 0.8 minus 0.7 minus 0.5 and the more if it goes down to uh, 0 then it becomes perfectly inelastic so minus 0 0.5 would be uh, inelastic. So airlines is the answer. In question number 13, the diagram shows the demand curve facing a monopolist. Now I've put down over here C as the answer and what I've done is I've actually used process of elimination. I've said A is not the answer as monopoly output at OE. That's the reason I've given. In part B, Increase productive efficiency by EF, not guaranteed in a monopoly. Uh, lead to an increase in average cost of G, uh, HG. Again, that's not the answer. So C is the answer. Result in a fall in price from OG. So simply we could say is if the price is brought down, the uh, quantity demanded will increase to EF. Question 14. Again, I've used uh, process of elimination. In fact, even if I don't use process of elimination, it's a straightforward case. It says at current levels of output, the MSC of making a good is greater than its MPC. Also, the MSB of the good is greater than its marginal private benefit. As a result, there will probably be. So what over here is MSC is greater than MPC. MSB is greater than MPC as well. So both positive and negative externalities. So a misallocation of resources. Question number 15 is about the uh, pollution permit. The reason for answer being C, which is, is designed to reduce the negative externalities arising from pollution, is a government policy. Question number 16. The diagram below shows the demand and supply curve for wheat in European Union. So what I've done is I've shown you over here that is the excess supply. So I've put on C as the answer, which is price times excess supply as at P2, the demand will fall to OQ2 and supply increases to OQ3. So that's the difference and that's the price. So times that will the amount spent on intervention buying the EU would be. So that is the amount EU would have to spend. In question number 17, B is the answer which is straightforward. In question number 18, I have given reasons, specialization and division of labor require. In my earlier video I have said, let's say for example if you've got dentist in the economy and a teacher goes over there to get his teeth treated, now for his special services he'll have to pay in money. Similarly, if the son of the dentist comes down to the teacher for private tuition, then uh, he will have to pay for his services by money. So what they are consuming each of the services, but there is a method or a means of exchanging goods and services, which is the money. In question number 19, at point OT, MSC is equal to MSB, which means the market has taken into consideration the externalities. 
In question number 20, I've said C is the answer. Underproduction of goods with positive externalities has to be a merit good. So which is a partial failure of the market. In question number 21, I've put down the labor productivity in an economy is likely to improve if there is, so I've said an increase in the quantity of capital per worker. And I've given examples over here. One example is from the car manufacturing industry where we have robotic arms on the assembly line. Less workers are needed to manufacture a car. Another thing would be uh, my experience in Tesco the other day where there was one uh, customer service assistant helping 15 different people on the self-checkout machine. So 15 people at one time being handled by one person or one worker. Question number 22. So I've put on B, between 2007 and 2009, there was a small increase in inequalities of disposable income, which is straightforward over here. If you look over here, top 20%, their, in, their share of income has gone up from 35 to 45, so they've become richer. On the other hand, the lower, lowest 20%, their share of income has gone uh, from 10 to 6. So they've actually become poorer in contrast to the richer people. In question number 23, the diagram below shows the average cost curve for a business. What I've said over here is, the business moves from being productively inefficient to being productively efficient when output changes from, so I've said J to G. So if you look over here from J to G, this is the minimum efficient scale. So this is where the business should be operating. So if it moves from J to E, it becomes efficient. Question number 24, I have said D is the answer to introduce an indirect tax of P to P3 per turn of steel produced. So if you look over here, that's the indirect tax. That's the tax or the uh, burden borne by the customers. That's from P1 to P3 is the burden borne by the uh, producers. In question number 25, a pure public good or service is always available for consumption by others when consumed by an additional person. So by characteristic, it's non-rivalrous.